I just ask? Just, sorry. Do, yeah, do go on, good game. Yeah, do, do you think do you think City was shot by the start that we that we got with that goal because they they weren't expecting it. And to be fair, I know you've said like, oh yeah, we let you come through on goal. We've, we've made all those jokes and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we did break through. T Terry said, you know, there was sort of ten counter attacks. I think it was uh, that United did put get get put together, which didn't didn't come to fruition in the end because of the fact that the player played the wrong pass or headed it down or whatever it was or Rashford missed those chances. If Hoyland's there, we could have been two or three nil up in the start. I'm not saying overall your performance wasn't good, but I think that with the chances we created at first, we could have had a stronger lead with that than that one nil because until Foden scored that goal, you were making chances, but you weren't actually breaking our, our defence down. So we set up, yes, to defend part of the bus, call it whatever you want. But at the end of the day, the counter-attacks we were getting through, we were getting three or four players and maybe the right pass here and there, we could have broke you down. And I think that we shocked you a little bit at first. I think half-time, obviously Pep's mm -hmm. gone in, made some changes. Foden's come over to the left where he's got more success in the second half sort of thing. He has made changes. He's had to make those changes. So you didn't come out, you come out with all your chest, chest puffed out and stuff. United came out expecting nothing from this. And at half-time, everyone was kind of a little bit like, oh, what's going to happen here? So I think you're a little bit shocked, and this little bit of bravado that you're saying, "Oh, we were better. We were the best team in the world." We're not. We at the moment, you know, your team are playing one of the best, one of the best teams in the world, uh, but they do put a lot on on a lot of their forward play. They are taking risks at the back, which other teams will definitely do better than. If we'd have had Rashford uh, last season or whatever when he was scoring his thirty goals, or, or if you, if you go back only two or three games, you can. It doesn't matter who we came up against. We were scoring three, four goals a game. We were playing much more attacking football with Hoyland, where we knew we could have that strength. We could take the chances with Rashford on the left and Ganacho on the right. And we had but today. We we had to set up with the personnel we had available. So yeah, you might have played further forward, but that that could have gone against you, big style. You know, I, that I think if, Go if you it. had Hoyland, we would have taken yeah. more advantage of you because exactly. that means less man in midfield and yeah. we would have dominated you in midfield. And I think Pep would have then played Rodri and Kovacic. No, that's the same formation. We're just talking different players. We, 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 yeah. Or maybe we might have had a little bit more out to the wing and not quite as much in the middle. But at the end of the day, we're, we're saying, you know, that one player, it was a massive player for us. When you think at the end of the day, we, we start, is Rashford a centre forward? No, he's not. For the last three, four, maybe five, six years, he's been playing on the wings. He's not been playing as a centre forward. United haven't got a centre forward at the moment who is fit and ready to play. When you look at the team that City are putting out, the the bench that you've got, the amount of the quality that you've got in the oh, team, yeah. I, I think you expected a lot more from that game today. And you're actually going, yeah, we, we walked off there quite. We, we Evans, smashed them. Lindelof, like mad. Yeah, I think, I, just, I think one thing though you said there, Phil, that's kind of key when we talk, and then hands are kind of followed up saying, well, we'd have less control in the midfield. Do you did you watch Scott McTominay in the midfield? But it, there's no, there's no, like to be fully um, fair, like there's no yeah. Scott McTominay. Like he was roaming all over the place, yeah. playing in this weird false role. Didn't, didn't you know you have Rathmus, yeah. Scott McTominay's not there. You have Bruno and Cass sitting. You yeah. now have way yeah. more control. Actually, and, and, yeah, and Scott, Scott McTominay, in fairness to him, he, he was the, the architect of most of our counter attacks falling apart. Mm. Yeah. And some, some yeah. of the passes he had to make weren't even difficult. Some Or sometimes it was just hold the ball up stick your backside into the fullback and wait for some support. And he lost it every single time. And in my opinion, Hoyland does a better job and it still would have probably lost the game. Still probably would have lost the game because City are one of the best teams in the world, one of the best English sides ever. But again, that's probably what frustrated me as well. If we'd have been more trained and coached to playing like this away from home against these better sides. I mean, we haven't really tried to do... That's why our record away from home against the better teams is so poor. Because we play far too openly, far too expansively. And we're not drilled well enough and coach well enough to do that either. But we're just this in between side. And uh, also, you, side yeah, really one. quickly, if we if we're in the realm of what could have been in ifs and buts and cherries and nuts and all that malarkey, some when we got Ten Hag, I remember I saw a bunch of Ajax players saying that Ten Hag is great if he if his plan A works. His in-game management and the substitutions and the changes that he makes inside the game, though. You guys will find out for yourself what it what it what it what it is for real. And yeah. over the time, we, we can say if we went up to nil, then we would have went out and closed. It. But what happens when Pep inevitably makes that in-game adjustment? How does how does Do, do you want to know how, how how true what you're saying is there? 
whenever we go one nil up, I come, I become more worried. Yes. That's weird. You should I never. Agree. And you see, Man United fans agreeing. Whenever we score first, I go, oh no. My brother says, why aren't you celebrating? Because now I'm really worried. It's, <laughs> it's it genuinely, it's the weirdest feeling being a Man United fan right now. Um, I'll do some more super chats in a minute, but I wanted to I'll bring up a certain player. Um, I mentioned him uh, uh, earlier on. V. Full Foden today. Steps up again, two clutch goals, two amazing goals, really, uh, to give you the three. I know it was it was wrapped, rounded off by Haaland, but Phil Foden again today demonstrating why he's one of the best players in the Premier League. Yeah, I got to get into my press conference mode. Listen, <laughs> Phil, he's that guy, and he's been he's been that guy. I, Terry, when you've had me on post matches and I've had to quote unquote defend him or prop him up, I'm not. I don't need to do it. I don't need to do it. All I'm going to refer to is look at his performance today. And it's been so consistent this season. I've said it before. Everybody wanted to talk about this man and say he's not him. He shouldn't have been considered the star boy. He shouldn't have been considered so good. But they went after him last season because of an ankle injury and appendicitis. They went after him when he was most vulnerable. Now you're seeing at this point in the season, he's already scored more goals than he has in his career. In one season, at this point, he's already scored more. And what did he do today? He scored the goals that mattered, right? He scored the key goals that mattered. And even before the goal, when the ball was to his foot, I was calm because I knew he was going to make the right decision. I knew that it was going to be a settling down and it was going to be tactical. So if you want to keep chirping about Phil Foden, go ahead. Go ahead. Take your shots. But it makes no sense when you see a player like him playing. And we're going to have to continue to rely on him. Because in all honesty, we know that the life cycle of a footballer, it goes like this and it goes like that. We only have so many years left with KDB. And what we're seeing right now, you saw the guy, the man of the match, the man of the match is the successor to KDB. Hands 17 down. non-league goals. He's got 17 non-league goals. Yo, yeah? yo, Non-penalty goals. Yo, go. like that, the only player who scored more goals than him is Oli Watkins and Haaland. He doesn't take penalty like Saka. He doesn't take penalty. Saka's got a third of his goals. Hey, you didn't have, have to mention him. You have to Because that's a comparison that triggers people. A lot of people use this a lot. And when I say... But they shouldn't be compared, very though. And, and very, and very quickly on the penalties, though. Do yeah. you... When it comes to Haaland's goal record, have you minus his penalties from that, though? He's yeah, scoring 50. Hmm. Like but hang on. But Haaland's goals, do you minus his penalties? You can minus it, but it's still 40-something. But he scores 50. But do you minus it? Yeah? No, no. for a winger, <laughs> it, it, people look... No. You can't <laughs> minus Sackers and then not minus Harlands. Oh, no, no, sir. No, I don't. I don't. Better than that. <laughs> Terry, Terry, <laughs> let me just land a bit. You have I to can't stop let you land in shit, though. I'm trying, trying to help you here. I'm trying to help you here. No, because, Terry, I said a very factual statement. Facts. Not 17 non-penalty goals. Only... Brilliant. Only play only Watkins and Haaland, incredible strikers. Yeah, he has been carrying Man City. The question is, I said to people, when you're playing for a good side, I'll give an example. It's hard to stand out. When says Fabregas left as a legend at Arsenal, went to Barcelona, why was he in bench? Because there's Xavi, there's Iniesta, there's Messi. You can't stand out. You can't. So Kate Foden is unfortunate to have KDB. Bernardo, this will be one of the greatest players ever. So this year, everyone said he has to step up. He stepped up. How many players around the world are carrying a team? When are we going to have conversation about this guy's a generation talent? Wayne Rooney, Gaza, him, Bellingham. He should be in the Ballon d'Or list. Him and Bellingham, it's, you should be doing PR for the Premier League for him. It's but we down. fight here. Come on, come on. I'm going to shock you all. I agree with nearly everything Hamza said there. Barring the minors in the penalties of Saka, crazy, and the carrying city. I believe he should be talking about the generational talent. I think he is amazing. However, carrying city is too far. Let's not pretend yeah, like Rod, like Rodri, like John Stone, Silva. like KDB, like Bernardo. Harlan. No, not also been Bernardo been performing. Now, uh, Foden has stepped up and scored some massive goals, which is huge. But it's not as though he's scoring. Who did the one-two with him today? 
What do like, you mean? He, with Alvarez. 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 Exactly. Alvarez. Alvarez. His teammates are helping him. Well. Mm. The only thing I disagree with, I don't think Foden's carrying your team. Your team is full of a number of world-class players and many of them. Like, I think Rodri's on something like an unbeaten run when he's played for City in nearly 60 yeah, games. Yeah, like 50, 58 or something. So I've been looking at it an entire year. More. Entire but everything else you said, Hamza, I agree with. He, he is a generational talent. And now he's getting that starting berth more regularly and that key role. He, got, he's flying. I've got a little question there. I've got a little question there. We've got summer. We've got the, we've got the European Championships. And I think Gareth Sargi was actually in the crowd as well. Who does he go with he on the right? Stack off over. He's, he's wasting go Foden if he puts him on the right. He's wasting Foden if he puts him on the right. Where should Foden play, in your opinion, Dave? Right? For, for I, th- I think, he, I think yeah. he needs to play central for England. Instead of instead of Bellingham? Yeah. Why, Bellingham can't, would, would, why can't you play would, Bellingham, like, him, yeah, Bellingham. And, and Rice? Why can't the three yeah. of them be in the midfield? Yeah. You can probably in some games. I, I don't mm. think you could have two attacking midfielders in all games, but I, I think that works in, definitely in some. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I want him to play for Foden. I think he's... I think he's absolute. He's absolute quality. Uh, the, Pete here says, "Here comes the shameless Hamza. You got him, Terry." I just I, listen. Hamza's a great guy. I just I don't believe in discounting. Like, I defend KDB on it. Some people say some of his assists don't count because they come from free kicks and corners, like wait, crossing wait. balls. They like crossing balls is spamming balls. That's I, I, crazy, you, man. I can't yeah, say. I think, you can't say that. I think Anyone it might have got. Sorry, Go Terry, I think it might have got lost in translation. I think professor It didn't get lost in no, translation. Give me a Hamza chance. Speaks perfect English. Give me a chance. Give me we a understood chance. him clearly. No, no, give me a chance. No, because I've I've attended a few of his lectures, and if you don't attend, maybe you m- might have missed how he breaks things down. The difference between Foden and Saka is what he's trying to emphasize. The goals that Foden has, they're not penalty goals. That he wasn't talking about overall. Tough. Is this when no. you're comparing the two players? Because a lot, maybe it's not not on this panel today. But in the football spaces and all that kind of stuff, the conversations yeah. always suck in Foden. And look, Foden's doing his thing, and they're not penalty goals. That's, that's Again, though, but I, I, I would counter that and raise it this. You can't attack Saka because he's the best penalty taker at Arsenal just because Foden exactly. isn't the best penalty taker at Man City. That, exactly. It's, it's, like, it's like this is where the thing KDB. Some go, yeah, but so many of his assists come from corners and free kicks and my favorite player who's got loads of assists it doesn't matter who it is doesn't take the corners and free kicks well that's because he wasn't the best in his team at doing that you can't take them away from kdb because he's brilliant that no i I hear it i hear it it's the same way no it's the same way because holland holland actually he defends our corners whereas most strikers will often be the the, and hamza you've done you've just discredited one of your own players again because you said saka just scores tap-ins you're no, the same no, I, I said Foden and, scores and, and come on, and you come on him. You come. You said he scores tappings, and you've come on here many times defending Harlan because most of his goals are what tappings. No, <laughs> no, they're not. And tapping goals are extremely. Yeah, they had the tappings today, though. Otherwise, everybody would be scoring tappings if they if they were easy to find that space. So again, Hamza, in your attempt to discredit Saka, you've gone and screwed Harlan twice in one show, bro. Come on, think outside the box. It's better, this is not TikTok. No, this it's is not it's, TikTok. It's, the we thing speak is, back. We speak but, but, back here. But what was Wayne Rooney good at? Like great players. Everything. That have such Everything. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Oh, no, no. no. Sam, please, but he will carry this, United in big games. Foden has carries Everton. Scores okay. clutch goals. I've seen this guy. Oh. Leipzig. We were losing. Comes back. We win that game. Today, again, a belt. What, well, Hamza, do you mean like Foden's been more of an engine to a degree? Like, is that what you mean? Like, like the team? Because obviously, when De Bruyne was out, there was a big concern for City. Yes. So, is do you mean in that kind of aspect where Foden stepped up and he was a bit of the engine of the team? He helped everything. In, I think yeah. that's what Hamza means. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you should compare Foden to Yeah, so I, I, I was just astonished as to why Rooney really was mentioned here. <laughs> I was just astonished. <laughs> <talking about. laughs> Foden is a clutch player. I just yeah. I, I'm, I care about the language. I don't think mm. carrying City is the right phrase when there's so yeah, many sad. players that make City what they are. Okay, even when they're not at their best, like it, it's been an influence. Okay, okay let, me, let me say this. There's no doubt about it. it let, it's like when Man, when Man United were great, Paul Scholes and Giggs and Beckham and Neville, and they they didn't. Not one of them carried us collectively. They were brilliant. Okay. That's why we won so many trophies, and that's where City are. For at, me. at this point, at this point, I think what we can say is. 
Foden's been our most consistent player the entire season. He's your best so, player this year. Best so player. exactly. So when when Rodgers been out suspension, when KDB's been hurt, when Holland's been hurt, it's when Silva's been out for a few games injured. You talked about Stones. Foden has been that steady player yeah, all season long. There's, there's got to be some balance nice. in the conversation, though. That's the problem. Right, like you, you lose you lose your point when like listen. I actually agree. Foden's a generational talent. I actually agree. He's been the best player for City. But then when you start going, oh, he's as good as Gaza and stuff. Like nobody wants to hear that because it's bullshit. So like you gotta like. I don't have say a, that. Is it is professionals are saying that? You, Rio. You, so these guys are world class guys. You're yeah, legend. Rio said, said it. That. I, get, I get that, but you're mm. here to give. You're here to. Give, but. You know, Rhea Ferdinand said some other crazy stuff as well. What we want is your opinion. Does that make Real sense? Would coach and we'll, United, okay. I'm going to do some more super chats here. I want...